one of the remaining lines in this table which I uh, missed uh, or skipped uh, intentionally was uh, regarding this doping. So uh, Mr. Denard also said about the doping that the doping concentration should also scale. So he said that the doping concentration should scale up by this factor K or should increase by 1.4. So why why does Mr. Why did Mr. Denard say that? So the reason he said that was because he was scaling all these dimensions. So he was uh, he was looking uh, into scaling of width, length, the oxide thickness. So another thing he wanted to scale, uh, which is needed uh, to scale along with these uh, quantities, is the depletion width. So which is the depletion width of your uh, p-n junction in your uh, in your in your in your soil drain region of your transistor so for this for the depletion width of uh, this junction it would directly proportional to the doping here to uh, to the doping in your soil drain and the doping in the channel so what he was saying that to for this to scale each of these now has to scale by uh, this factor so if each of these uh, dopings uh, scale up as k your depletion width will scale down by this factor so that that's uh, that's the remaining um, remaining uh, line in this table and we have seen how this whole table plays out so if you scale all your dimensions uh, you scale your voltage your uh, power uh, consumption per uh, per circuit uh, actually scales down reduces by half and your power density uh, stays the same uh, but this is uh, this became a very famous uh, paper uh, not because it uh, just uh, painted a very rosy picture about scaling but uh, uh, it also Mr. Denard was also very uh, very careful to uh, point out some of the challenges so he was very careful to also you know list out the challenges that people who are trying to uh, follow the scaling uh, law might uh, face and that's the characteristics you uh, see time and again about uh, good researchers about uh, papers uh, which are uh, which uh, garner a large number of citations that they they don't only just paint a rosy picture but they also lay out the challenges so one of the challenges that he uh, he 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 pointed out and i am quoting him here is that he was he was uh, he was not sure whether in this uh, VG minus VT to uh, scale as 0.7 whether you'll be able to continue scaling the VT and the reason why he was saying that was because uh, suppose you define your uh, VT at this point where your transistor turns on uh, the the sub threshold region or the weak uh, weak inversion region it has this sub threshold soap uh, uh, which I'll, I'll talk later when we talk about FinFET and that's determined uh, by uh, essentially the Fermi statistics if you are available if you are already aware of uh, if you have some physics background but essentially what it means is the sub threshold soap is uh, it's uh, it has a minimum value of uh, 60 millivolt per decade so if 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 you if you change your uh, voltage by 60 millivolt uh, you can maximum reduce your uh, reduce your current uh, by an order of magnitude and so he was worried that if you keep if you shift your VT that is you know you move this graph uh, towards the left you will be facing a very high very high off current and which which is uh, which as we'll see later actually turned out to be true but uh, even in 1974 Mr. Denard was uh, clever enough to notice that this might be one of the road blocks in uh, in uh, in scaling so another pitfall of this uh, scaling theory that uh, mr denard uh, pointed out in his uh, gssc 1974 paper was regarding scaling of interconnect so this paper is is most known for uh, the paper on uh, which had the, the table which had uh, the scaling results for transistor but uh, Mr. Denard, uh, he also looked at the scaling of uh, interconnect uh, lines in this paper uh, as well. So this paper has this another table 
which is is probably didn't become as famous as the first table but it's 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 equally important and what he said he looked when he looked at the scaling of the interconnect what he said was now now assuming that you're scaling on your transistor you need to scale all your interconnect dimension as well so you need to scale your width your trans your interconnect height as well as the length of the total length of the interconnect so what he said was if if you do that so if you scale uh, everything again by uh, all the dimensions by a factor of 1 over k or you scale all of them by 0.7 the resistance of your line actually increases so why is that so your length is actually decreasing so your length over here is decreasing but your area is is decreasing as square of that so your width is decreasing uh, and your height is also decreasing so your resistance assuming you have a constant resistivity actually increases it goes up by this factor k and then what he says was your capacitance which is uh, essentially also uh, it uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's proportional to your uh, it's proportional to your all the dimensions and it's also inversely proportional to this uh, distance you have between interconnect lines so what he was saying was if you scale these interconnects your uh, capacitance actually since your overall area uh, decreases by a factor of uh, k square but this distance also decreases by in between the two interconnects also decreases by this uh, factor over 1 by k so your capacitance uh, it uh, it scales by a factor of 1 by k so your uh, delay for your line which is your rc delay actually since your resistance increased by a factor of k and your capacitance decreased by a factor of k your uh, your total line delay it actually remains constant and he he pointed this out he saw this and he he saw this was a big concern because what he says that uh, looking at table 2 a number of problems arise because the cross sectional area of conductor decreases by k square the length is decreases only by k and he says that the response time of your uh, interconnect which is given by rc is actually unchanged by scaling so what he said about the transistor delay was uh, that your transistor delay which is given by cv over i will actually keep on reducing by 1 over k but your interconnect delay does not scale with uh, scaling your uh, dimension so it will remain uh, constant and he, he knew even in 1974 when uh, transistor delay was dominating your uh, overall uh, circuit performance he said that because of this non-scaling of this interconnect delay it might one day become a big problem and that as we see later did in fact turn out to be uh, true but for the most part of uh, 30 years this uh, Denard scaling uh, it progressed uh, it was a smooth sailing from uh, 1974 all the way to 2004 people were able to scale the voltage scale the oxide thickness and they reduced the power consumption per transistor the power density remained constant uh, and this 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 was true for uh, 30 years and that that's pretty remarkable so uh, very recently in 2008 both uh, mr uh, moore who 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 gave moore's law and mr dinar who gave these uh, scaling uh, uh, these uh, equations uh, of how we should uh, scale things they were uh, rewarded by this uh, IEEE Medal of Honor, which is the highest uh, highest uh, recognition that IEEE, uh, which is the biggest society of engineers, uh, gives, and um, uh, both of them were recipient of this medal. And uh, you can see another recipient over here, which is our our president uh, John Hennessy. He also received this medal in uh, 2012 for for a different thing.